All right, so back in 2008, when the housing market, uh, the, the bubble popped, and it was the kickoff to the, uh, what they lovingly referred to as the Great Recession, that was when I still owned our frame shop, custom picture framing. Um, it was in a beautiful downtown building. It was a Sullivan-esque style building. It was, uh, we were on the ground floor right on the corner. Beautiful location. Um, I don't remember how many square feet, but it was quite a bit. And we were paying $3,000 a month rent. And so I can pretty much... If I look back on it, I could probably tell you the day that somebody turned off the business switch. The commerce button went from on to off. Because we were just starting to um, kind of show a profit. And it was starting to look like, oh wait, we're going to make a living at this. And this is, this is working for us. And we're paying the rent. We're paying our suppliers. We're, you know, we're doing really pretty well. And then all of a sudden it just off, nothing. The end of our lease, you know, we closed up shop, went on our, went on our way, and I went out looking for a real job. Um, and I applied, that was basically my job. I can remember, uh, gosh, that would have been 2000. Guess to, I guess that would have been 2010, uh, 8, 10, yeah, something like that. Anyway, uh, it was summer, and I just, my full-time job was filling out applications, and I filled out, I couldn't tell you how many applications, a lot of them were online, and I, I don't know, you might as well write a letter to Santa Claus, as far as I'm concerned, you just, they're not... Online applications, I, I don't know that they go anywhere. I don't know that they ever get seen. But what we did, or what I did, was I was filling out applications. I was going, um, I was going to, to, to places of business. Uh, I went to mom and pops. I went to, went to municipalities, so like the county, the city, the uh, di several different cities. Um, I had one real solid lead with the county. Uh, to, to work in the surveyor's office or something. I'm not real sure. I don't remember. I remember the human resources lady was all excited to see a, a high school, or not a high school, but a uh, architecture major come in with his stuff. That, you know, She was, oh, this is great. It's perfect. We're going to get you this job. And that didn't happen. Um, but this is, this is a story about Target. So... I applied, like I say, I applied a lot of places, and one of the places I applied was Target. Target. So Target had another one of those online forms, and I think there were like something like 200 questions on the application online, and it was just, it just seemed like it was a lot of questions. And this was for a nighttime position in the warehouse, in the back, away from people. And... One of the first questions, why do you want to work at Target? Now, I know that seems like a logical question to ask when you're, when you're looking for employees. Well, why do you want to work here? Well, it kind of isn't. Uh, it's not a, especially like a place at, like Target. I mean, I can imagine like, you know, if you applied to a place like Disneyland or, or uh, Pixar or something like that, it's like, oh, I always wanted, you know, that kind of stuff. But nobody, I don't think, really wakes up um, I don't think any four-year-old child gets up and one day I want to work at Target. You know, it's just not, just not the hopes and dreams of anybody that ever. So anyway, so um, somebody asked a question, why do you want to work at Target? And the Target question, you know, it just, you just come up with something. And, and my, you know, I probably should have because I have bills to pay. But what I wrote was something about being familiar with Target. I was comfortable with the brand, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, something that, you know, make them, make them at least think that I was a excited employee. 
Uh, some days, weeks later, I get a phone call from Target. It was a young woman on the other end of the line. She says, hey, uh, this is Target. Are you still interested in jobs? Says, yes. She says, well, I have two questions to ask you. And the first question she asked me, why do you want to work at Target? I said, well, I think I answered that on the application. I said, you know, and I, I kind of paraphrased what I'd already answered, how I'd already answered the question. And, you know, whatever the second question was, I don't have any idea. But and then it was, um, she said, well, let's schedule an interview or get you down here to the, to the store. And you'll, they're going to take you and, and, you know, do this and we'll, we'll go to the next step. So I show up for my interview. It doesn't start as an interview, though. What it started at was they led me over to another computer. And the, this was another, uh, basically what I think it was an IQ test. You know, it was one of those deals where it was, um, you know, you got five soup cans, you only carry two at a time, how many trips does it take? And you're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to do simple math and get the wrong answer. And um, anyway, I went through that and I, I submitted it and I get called up to the office. Oh, you know, we're, we're thrilled, Mr. Jennings, this is great. You did really well on, the, on your uh, computer, you know, your test here. And we're really excited and uh, we just have two more uh, interviews for you. Just, we have two, two actual interviews for you. And I said, that's great, let's, let's do it. So they took me to this little office and this is where I, it, it was, I should add that that lady had asked me the same thing, that same question that, why do you want to work at Target? So there's three times I've been asked, why do you want to work at Target? And so she, she takes her thing and, and, and she goes and, you know, I, they lead me into this little room and, um, This is when it was, I was kind of really getting annoyed by this time. So the, the, the application process worked. But by this time, I'm, I'm a little, because it's corporation. I've worked with corporate, big corporate stuff before, you know, big retailer. And they're weird. And uh, I could see this was going the same direction. And that's when Timmy... Timmy, I swear, that's what it says, name tag. Not Tim, not Timothy, Timmy. Comes in the door, sits down. Hi, Mr. Jennings, I, my name is Timmy. And I'm here to interview you. We're going to do the, I'm going to do your first, first stage of your interview. And then we're going to, you know, move on from there. And I was like, all right. And the first question I was, why do we want to work at Target? And I said, wow, that question gets asked a lot. And he says, yes, it does. And I said, wow. I said, well, you know, I said, all the other times I basically said this. And I, you know, I, again, I just paraphrased what I had said prior about being comfortable with the brand. I shopped there. We knew what it was, that kind of stuff. I knew people that had worked there prior, and they would all experienced, you know, had a decent experience there. And I was like, you know, that's, that's why. Again, I probably should have just said because I need to pay bills. Anyway, after the interview, we, he's like, he's excited, man. He's like, oh, this is going great, Mr. Jennings. He says, this is wonderful. You, 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 are you, can you stay and we'll take this to the next step? And by this time, I'm done. I, I'm, I'm fed up. Because this is, like I said, this was a back room warehouse position job in the middle of the night. I wasn't even sure I wanted it. Minimum wage, working at, I mean, working graveyard. It, it, maybe there's upward mobility, maybe there's not. I don't know how far can you go in Target. I, I have no idea. But it wasn't, wasn't looking like a promising position in life. But I did need a job, and I didn't have bills to pay. So I was st sat around. And that's when they sent in, and I swear to you, I swear, name tag, Skippy. Skippy. Skippy comes in. Mr. Jennings, and I guess he talked to Timmy because he was thrilled. Timmy says, Timmy says, you're really, uh, really doing well on this interview. He says, I want to get you, 
get you through this real quick so we can get you on to the next step. And I'm not sure how many steps there are. It just seems like there's a never-ending step. We're already on step five or six now. I, I, yeah, I don't know. First question out of his mouth. Why do you want to work at Target? You know, leans in. Just, why do you want to work at Target? I was done. I did the wrong thing. I may have done the right thing. I don't know. Like I said, the application pro pro process worked. So I was done. I was done playing the corporate game, and that's, that's when I ended the interview. I said, I said, that question gets asked a lot. And I said, I'll tell you what, I actually want to work at NASA, but they're not hiring picture framers right now and they won't return my calls. He looked at me. The interview basically went downhill from there. Asked me this sort of the same questions the last guy did, you know, are you okay with taking instructions from younger people? Yes, I don't care how old you are. Just I just, you know, whatever. I don't care. That's not not the issue. But they had, they had played with me and played with me until I finally just broke. And so, that's why I don't work at Target. Hey YouTube, I'm starting to think I need to write a script. I've been trying to record a video for the last few days. Um, I have decided on what we're doing with the channel. Uh, basically, uh, I... Basically, the wife and a couple other people have been just on my case. Why don't you just make YouTube videos? Why don't you just do it and, and just do things in the garage, do stuff, you know, whatever. And, you know, with her about to graduate college and finally, you know, get into a, get herself a real job that, that would have a real uh, income security, you know what, maybe, maybe they're right. So what we're doing is we're moving on to basically two types of videos from here on out. I'm going to do this type. This one here is a uh, more, more traditional vlog. We're going to do something. I'm going to try and upload a video at least once a week uh, just covering what's going on, what I'm doing in the garage. Uh, they may stumble. They may not come out real steady the, for the first few months here. I'm not real sure. It kind of depends on... Uh, it kind of depends on income, really. It depends on if I've got money to come in to, that I can feel secure in spending on certain projects, like getting the three-phase into the building so that I can hook up the lathe and then do the lathe the repairs on the lathe and this and that. And that you know, just different projects. Uh, the Ranchero, the 4x4 Ranchero, I haven't spent money on it because I don't feel secure spending money on it right now. Uh, yeah, I, there is also, you know, the power hammer, I've got most of the parts for it, but there's some things that I wanted to use the new machines to fabricate for it. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, the second type of video, so that's the first type, going to be vlog. The second type is going to be actual project videos, and they'll, they'll be edited a little bit better. Actually, uh, hopefully a lot better. Uh, matter of fact, I did mention earlier in a, the last video, I think it was, I mentioned... Uh, a new, not really new, but a renewed love of Coleman lanterns. And I'm hoping to figure out a way to animate, uh, add animation to the, to the videos. And because I'd like to go into like these lanterns or any other different, a, a myriad of other things that I've done over the years. It, it would be kind of neat to diagram, you know, the, the, the workings and that kind of stuff. So we're going to work on that. Um, what gets turned into a project video may have a lot to do with how, uh, well it was documented while it was recording. Uh, so for example, right now, a current project I'm working on are some fountains, core 10 fountains. I've been recording as much as I can, but I'd really like to have a finished product. That's out of my control. So as soon as they're finished, I actually have some work to do on, to, on them today, but as soon as they're finished, 
I don't know when they get installed. I don't know. I don't even know if after they're installed I'll ever have access to the site. But it would be nice to get some video of them running. You know, so it's like from start to finish. And it may not be a real involved video, but it'll be something, you know, and it'll be complete. This is a project. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. Other things, it may just be ongoing projects, for example, like the Ranchero. It'll just be a series of little projects, uh, little project videos, and to catch the whole thing, you'd have to watch the vlogs and the project videos and this, that, and the other thing. So, yeah, like the... I think we're over pretty much most of the... Uh, you know, I might do a project video on the Ranchero that's like, hey, we're installing the windshield, you know. Uh, or that may end up being a vlog. Hey, look, we installed the windshield. I don't know. It, it's, it's up in the air. We'll decide, you know, as, as we go. Um, I do have a lot of projects that are piling up. Uh, I don't know how many we're going to get to. I don't know how many. I'm, I don't know. I, I've got... I still have a table I, I, I need to build. I got to get these fountains done. I've got to get, um, there's a motor sitting in here that we're building for a friend. Uh, that one's a little bit weird because he kind of wants to help build it. So I don't really know how that works. I've got a welding table. Um, I was actually asked by someone to design and build a welding table. They've got the materials or at least most of them. And he's like, I want you to make a video of it. Fine, we'll make a video of it, and it'll be a project video, start to finish. Um, I hope to introduce more anecdotal little story time, like uh, if it recorded right, you will have seen, at the beginning of this video, you will have seen me talking about my attempt at getting hired at Target, and how that failed miserably, and it's my fault. I mean, you, you don't even have to... Yeah, we know, we know why I didn't get the job at Target. Um, <laughs> the system works. That's, that's basically the, the long and the short of it. But I, may tell, uh, I might tell you the story of the toenails. Um, I may tell you the story of how I got fired from Michaels. I may tell you any number of stories. I, there, I've got, I'm getting old. I'm, uh, I'm getting these old man stories. They may be uh, relevant. They may not be some, you know, who knows. But I figured, you know, it'd be kind of fun just to get some of these on uh, tape. That's what we're doing. That's how we're moving forward. And I don't know what else. I guess I could give you an update. That's what this is for. Let me give you a brief update of what I'm in the middle of right now. Um, I'm in the middle of there's basically, well, there's three things going on right now that are just um, driving me bonkers. Uh, one of them is the fountains, naturally. The fountains are taking me just way too long. I didn't have, um, they're made out of 10-gauge uh, core tin, and they had to be broke. And I sent it to a guy that supposedly had a press brake that was big enough to handle them, and he either didn't know how to use his press brake or his press brake isn't big enough in tonnage. Uh, so basically what it did was my shorter lengths, they're all bent, nice, crisp, 90 degree angles. The longer lengths, they're a little open. You know, the, the angles are a little bit not quite 90. And what that tells me is either he ran out of hydraulic pressure, you know, actual tonnage, or uh, he doesn't, he didn't know how to, you know, get it bottom at coin those corners and get them tight so I'm fighting with that um, I probably won't go too much into that even in the project video uh, another one is I have 20 uh, handrails that I actually I'm not doing them uh, I couldn't I didn't have the equipment to do them and this has been going on for I don't know it's been over a month well probably two months now and I basically, uh, I, sub, I subbed the, the projects to a friend of mine to have them made. And it's, it's been one, one thing after another. It was, we, we hit a delay and um, I initially said I didn't want to do them at all. 
and they begged me and I said well I'll find I'll find out if my buddy can do it he says no you know he's I think he's a little bit more uh, optimistic than I am and his his immediate response oh yeah sure no problem we can do them and then when he came down to it basically what it is is it's some tubing that we have to get there in a public space handrails and they'll oftentimes have that little 180 degree radius return and the architect called out a radius that's very tight four inch and a half tubing it's, it's minimum it's the smallest you can get and we couldn't find anybody in town that had the tubing bender that would make it and so he he had a buddy that had the bender and then he called up to get the the die and they sent the wrong die that was you know they they're custom made i guess you know they don't stock them so they didn't have it in stock so there was a lead time to have it made and then there was the shipping time and that was two or three weeks or whatever and then uh I got involved and bought him the right die, and I'm hoping right now that he's getting these things made because it is holding up a five million dollar project, or so I'm told. It might be something else holding it up, but I don't want to be the one holding it up. Finally, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, the wife's uh, car she'd been using to go do her student teaching was basically repossessed. I that's you know that that sums it up, but. Um, anyway, it went to be, it, it went away and that shuffled and jockeyed around a bunch of art issues. So I'm now driving the Jeep, the 74 CJ5. I had a job that I was supposed to go to yesterday up in Tehachapi and the fugly truckling, the 2006 2500 Chevy Silverado, um, with the diesel and all the fancy stuff wouldn't start and I just recently changed the alternator in it and what because that's what we thought it was it wasn't we thought it was just not charging so I bought a brand new alternator put it in still doesn't charge until it has been running and warms up well now what I'm noticing is it uh, it won't I need to do more testing. I'm not entirely certain what it's doing, but I know when I went out to start it yesterday, it wouldn't start, wouldn't turn over, wouldn't do anything. And it's like the batteries won't hold a charge more than a couple of days. And I don't know whether I've got some sort of vampiric load that something's, you know, some sort of little closed circuit somewhere in the system is running the battery down. Batteries, there's it's two batteries. Uh, or if the batteries are just failing which they are I don't know four years old I guess so they may just be done you know batteries don't last forever um, so I've got to check that it could even just be a bad ground somewhere I, I don't know at this point I, I just don't know uh, it may be a combination of things, but I do know that apparently the computer controls when the alternator charges the batteries, and that is a problem because if it's the computer dying, I am so tired of this this stupid truck and its computers because I have changed, it seems like, just about every one of them. And if anybody's interested in a 2006 uh, Chevy Silverado the big crew cab, 2500 HD, so it's three, three quarter ton with the, uh, uh, the the Duramax big diesel six whatever liter thing with the Allison transmission. I'll make you a great deal on it because, yeah, you know, if you <laughs> if you think you hate it now, wait until you drive it. It actually drives great when it's running. So, those are the three major things that are that are driving me up the wall right now, and so until that's where we're at. That kind of brings you up to date this week, and I think what I'm going to do is we're going to we're going to end this here. Uh, I don't know if it'll be. It looks like it's going to be running close. To, if I get the story, I don't know how it's, how long it's going to run you. I, I don't know if I'm going to edit it down or not very much, but uh, anyway, it's a little longer than I'd like it to be. But there you are. Uh, 
that brings you up to date. I want to shut this off. I'm going to get to start. Uh, I'm going to do some work on these uh, fountains. So until next time, bye.